Welcome back to the channel. This is Trendy Storm, and you were watching 11th and final part of What If Naruto Was Builder of Universal Weapon. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no more time, let's start the story. Tsunade was sleeping at the office as she pulled an all nighter to deal with paperwork because Shizune was absent due to being assigned to a patrol team outside the village. She asked Hiruzen for assistance. But the old Serutobi simply said no, claiming that he was far too old and had had enough of paperwork. She swears he had a mischievous look on his face as he walked away. She was startled awake by the sound of knocking on the door, and when she looked up, she saw Izumo and Kotetsu enter the room, carrying stacks of documents. Tsunade said, Oh good morning boys, though the inked text on her right cheek and drool dripping from the corner of her mouth told the story. Huh? You were fast asleep, Hokage-sama? You made us go fetch these heavy documents while you just sat there napping? Azumo exclaimed. Tsunade chuckled sheepishly, no, I wasn't, there would have been if a ninja with the Inazuka clan's markings hadn't come running into the room. Hokage-sama, we have an emergency! exclaimed the ninja. What is it? Tsunade inquired. I was patrolling the village with my Ninkan this morning when I came across this, he said, holding out a headband to her. There were signs of a fight and recognized the scent from the headband to belong to Sasuke while I picked up several foreign scents that I didn't recognize. Tsunade's eyes widened in surprise as she rose from her seat. Are you sure about this? She asked. Without a doubt, Hokage-sama, the ninja said. I can't believe it, he's already making his move, Tsunade thought as she remembered what he said before Jiraiya and Naruto found them. This time, in addition to grabbing everything I want, I'm going to grind the hidden leaf village to dust, said Orochimaru. Gur, so that's what that wrench is after, the Uchiha's powers, Tsunade sat down to devise a strategy. Azumo, Kotetsu. There's someone I need to see. Yes. Hokage-sama, said the Chunins. Tsunade had been waiting patiently since the Chunin had left to summon the person for whom she had requested his appearance when the door was knocked on a few times before opening to reveal Shikamaru, who came walking inside before standing before, though he didn't appear to want to be here. I'm glad you're here. There's something important we need to talk about, Tsunade said. What is it, Hokage-sama? Shikamaru inquired. Last night, Sasuke Uchiha was kidnapped from the village, and we're certain that Orochimaru is the perpetrator, Tsunade explained. What, but why is he being targeted? Shikamaru inquired. He purposefully marked Sasuke in order to obtain the Sharingan's power, and I've decided it's time for your first mission as a chunin, Shikamaru, Tsunade said. So all I have to do is bring Sasuke back? Shikamaru wondered. As long as there aren't too many enemies, it shouldn't be too difficult. Yes, that is your mission, but it must be completed as soon as possible. However, it may be as difficult as you think due to the possibility of him being guarded by Orochimaru's ninjas. Damn, this is going to be a real pain in the ass, Shikamaru thought before speaking up. Well, if we're going to face opposition, I'm going to need to request a team made up entirely of Junin and Chunin. I can't honor that request, Tsunade said, frowning slightly. What's the harm? You already know the answer. Most of the Junin have been sent out on missions, with only a few remaining to defend in the event of an attack. Go and round up any Genin you think are up for the job. You have 30 minutes to leave the village. This whole thing's a drag, but I do know the guy so I can't just let it go. Guess that's the way it is, Shikamaru turned around and began leaving the room. Hold on, there's one person I strongly recommend. Though he's just returned from a mission, I'm sure he won't mind assisting you, Tsunade said with a smile. Shikamaru had followed the directions to a mansion and was knocking on the wooden gates a couple of times. He hadn't really been paying attention at the time, but now he recognized the place as the Yandaimi's home where Naruto was living, 
and what's this about returning from a mission? Oh man, thinking about this will be a drag. I already have a lot on my plate, he made to knock on the gate again when he heard footsteps at the other side before one of the gates, revealing Naruto wearing his pajamas and a sleeping cap while holding a steaming mug of coffee with a drowsy expression on his face. Hey Shika, what brings you here so early in the morning? Naruto sighed. It's a pain, but I need you on board for an important mission, Shikamaru explained. What's the story? Naruto asked, raising the mug to his mouth and taking a sip. Orochimaru's lackeys have kidnapped Sasuke, and we need to bring him back. Are you kidding me? I just spoke to the guy yesterday. Naruto exclaimed, turning his head to the side and spitting out the coffee from his mouth before turning to face Shikamaru. Well, we need to hurry and get back, and we only have 30 minutes, Shikamaru said. Wow, this early in the morning and there are already issues. Tell me about it, what a pain. Hold on, I'm going to get myself geared up, then we can set out. Naruto ran back to the mansion and into his bedroom where he changed his clothes and packed up a few storage scrolls containing ninja tools before holstered his Muramasa blades and ran back out to the gate, okay, let's go. The duo took off down the street as fast as they could. Back at the mansion, Fu walked out of her room with a loud yawn, and Haku followed suit. Yawn what was all the commotion, it woke me up, Fu said drowsily. I'm not sure. But it appears that Naruto has been summoned for something important because his bedroom door is open and his swords are missing, Haku said after inspecting the location. Ah, that's no fair. Naruto-kun just got back from a big mission, and now he's gone again, Fu grumbled. Yeah, we miss him a lot. Chomei concurred. I'm sure he won't take as long as the others, but we'll have to explain to Sakura and the others when they arrive. They're not going to be happy, says the author. I know. Back on the streets, Naruto and Shikamaru were still running, the latter in the lead, so Naruto decided to ask him about any current plans. So, do you have any ideas on who to recruit for the mission? Naruto inquired. Yeah, I do, and we're heading there right now, Shikamaru and Naruto walked towards one of the clan houses, the latter recognizing it as belonging to the Akamichi clan. The Nara heir began knocking on the door, but no one answered. Wake up, will ya? He continued knocking, but still no response. We're running out of time here, Shikamaru, Naruto said, tapping his feet impatiently. I guess I have no choice, time for plan B. Shikamaru said as he reached into his ninja pouch and pulled out a bag of potato chips, much to Naruto's surprise. Are those potato chips? They're barbecued flavored, feel free to help me eat them, Naruto shrugged and joined in on the eating, soon it was almost gone as Shikamaru held the bag upside down and let the last chip drop to his hand, now. The door was suddenly opened to reveal a pissed off Choji in his pajamas as he rushed to snatch the last potato chip in the bag then skidded to a stop to look at the duo intensely. Even if it's a bag of potato chips, I refuse to let anyone have the last bite, Choji said, daring them to take it from him. Naruto shivered as he heard his friend say, wow. Intense. That was quite unexpected, Shinami exclaimed, surprised. And Akamichi takes food very seriously. Getting between them and food is akin to endangering your life, Karama explained, recalling her time in Kashina's seal. Choji and I have been on the same team for a long time and we get along well, so asking him is a no-brainer, Shikamaru explained. I get the gist of it, so who's next for us to, Naruto noticed something approaching them quickly, and it appeared to be aimed at Choji or the potato chips. Choji frowned at its intentions, not in your life. He chomped on the trip, causing the attacker to slow down as everyone recognized Akamaru. If Akamaru is here, then. Naruto looked ahead to see who he was referring to. Hey guys, what's the deal with you all being here? Kiba Inazuka inquired. I'm guessing they're in, right? 
Naruto inquired. Yup, Shikamaru said. After Choji dressed up, the group of 4 plus 1 dog ran down the street again, and the newcomers were briefed on what had occurred while they were on the move. So that's what's going on, well it's a good thing I woke up early to take Akamaru for a walk, and now it's time to get my teammate back, Kiba explained. What about Shino? Choji inquired. He's been on a special mission with his father for a couple of days. Well, that rules him out. Is there anyone else we could recruit before we leave? Naruto inquired. I wish we had more time to find more members, but we're already late. If we don't run into anyone else on our way out of the village, I suppose it'll just be us, Shikamaru said. They did, however, come across Neji, who was accompanying Lee after his surgery. They told him what was going on and Neji agreed to join in. Lee was disappointed that he couldn't come along, but the Hyuga advised him to do what he needed to do, which lifted his spirits before telling the others to continue without him. The group soon arrived at the village's newly opened gates. Now that we're all here, Shikamaru, what's the game plan? Naruto inquired. That's unexpected Naruto, I thought you'd want to take the lead now that you're Chunin and all, Kiba said, quirking his brow. Perhaps, but Shikamaru is a better strategist than I am, and Tsunade Ban assigned him as platoon leader, so I would delegate all mission planning to him, Naruto explained. In that case, perhaps you should start devising some sort of plan, because it appears that the enemy will ambush us, Neji said. For starters, this is a rescue operation, so we'll be in pursuit, which means the enemy already has an important advantage over us. That said, I'm arranging us in a deployment formation that can respond to any enemy assault. If any of you don't follow my exact orders, we're all going to die, Shikamaru said, making everyone except Naruto realize the gravity of the situation. All right, Shikamaru, lay it on us, Naruto said, crossing his arms and listening intently. Okay, we'll go with a single file strike formation. As we all know, the spearhead is the most important position, so that'll be Kiba. You and Akamaru are the most familiar with the Land of Fire's terrain, and with that sensitive nose of yours, you'll be able to track Sasuke's scent while sniffing out any booby traps the enemy might have set. Furthermore, because we'll have two sets of eyes up front, you. Alright, Akamaru and I have it covered, Kiba said, with Akamaru barking in agreement. Second in line will be yours truly, platoon leader. From there, I'll be able to direct everyone behind me using silent hand signals, and because I'm so close to Kiba, I'll be able to react to any situation, Shikamaru said. In the middle, the number three position is Naruto. The middle of the line is the perfect location for you because you're the most capable of using quick moves in front of you or behind, you're. You certainly got my number. I got your backs on this, Naruto replied, smirking. Fourth in line is Choji, you may not be fast, but your striking power is the greatest of the platoon members. Kiba, myself, and Naruto will launch a surprise attack, then you'll swoop in and finish them off, you're the second wave of our assault, Shikamaru continued. Alright, Shikamaru, leave it to me, Choji agreed. Finally, Neji, your position will be the most difficult, which is the rear lookout, and I want you to constantly scan ahead for weaknesses in our ranks. Understood, Neji said. All right then, take a look at this, Shikamaru went down on one knee and took out a blank scroll and pencil before sketching up a diagram of the team formation for the others to look at. This diagram shows exactly what part of the perimeter you're responsible for. Kiba watches the front, I am responsible for a wider forward view, Naruto's got the left, Choji's got the right, and Neji using your Byakugan. You cover. I have to say that I'm impressed with the formation and strategy that he has devised, Kurama exclaimed. Indeed, for someone so young, the decision to make him Chunin was sound, Chinami said. We don't have any, but I have to give these to you guys before we leave, Naruto said removing the rings from his bracelet and holding them out for the others to take. What are these for? Neji inquired. 
These rings are linked to the bracelet and have the ability to summon a weapon to the wearer without requiring my presence to use tag mode, Naruto explained. So we get to use your weapons? Sweet! exclaimed Kiba. Yeah, but there's a catch. You can only summon one weapon, which the ring selects for the bearer based on their battle style or the situation. I can also track where they are and communicate with them like radios. That makes things less difficult, Neji said, nodding. Shikamaru then spoke up, since no one has anything to add, I've saved the most important thing for last. For as long as I've known him, Sasuke and I haven't been close buddies and in fact I don't like him at all. This surprised the group. All the same, Sasuke is a ninja belonging to Konoha. He's a comrade and I'll put my life on the line for him. Wow! I never thought I'd see Shikamaru act like a chunin. Very impressive, Kiba said, clearly pleased with his best friend. Truer words could not be spoken Shikamaru, let us get moving and save Sasuke from those bastards, Naruto said, a foxy grin on his face. Alright, we'll go as soon as we check our gear. Show me your weapons, Neji said as the members took out their ninja pouches and opened them to show their inventory. Alright, let's go, Shikamaru said, with the others nodding in agreement before leaving the gates and beginning the mission to find their captured comrade. Meanwhile, the Sound Four were walking through a forest with Jirobo carrying what appears to be a barrel-shaped coffin sealed with a black lid and held in place by five seal tags strapped to his back. That little shit was a real pain in the ass, and the fact that he refused to follow Orochimaru was utter bullshit, Tuyuya frowned. Well, I had a lot of fun knocking him all over the place before bringing him in, Kitamaru smirked. Whatever you want to say, shithead. To Yuya, women aren't supposed to speak like that, Jirobo pointed out. Oh, fatty, go blow yourself. The four came to a halt in one spot as they sensed something approaching and frowned at what it was. It appears we have company, Sakin said. I'm sensing one. No, two, to Yuya said. Get ready. Kitamaru yelled to them. Two blurs charged at them from behind, and the sound four tried to flee but were stopped by the blurs, who turned out to be Genma, the referee for the Chunin exam finals, and his partner Rado. I know these guys, they work for Orochimaru, Rado frowned. And judging by the path these four are taking, I'm guessing they just arrived from Konoha, Genma observed the group and noticed something odd about them. What ya got in the coffin? Fighting two Junin at the same time. I tremble at the prospect, Kitamaru smirked as unknown markings spread from the side of his neck across his face and arms, causing the Junin to narrow their eyes at the sight of it. They all have curse marks, Genma observed. You might want to think about it. It won't be like the last time you caught us all off guard, Rado said. You're right, you shits, you're not going to make it this time exclaimed to Yuya. Trust me, you Orochimaru pawns, you don't want to mess with the shinobi of Konoha, Genma said. Sakin summoned a kanai in his hand and charged forward while throwing it, with Genma charging back right back and spitting the senbon from his mouth to deflect the incoming projectile, signaling the start of the battle as sounds of metal clashing echoed throughout the forest. Back with Naruto and the others, they were jumping along the branches, Kiba in the lead, when Akamaru began sniffing the air and let out a whine that drew the attention of his partner. What is it, Akamaru? Kiba inquired. What's up, Kiba? Shikamaru inquired. He detects the odor of blood somewhere nearby. Can you narrow it down for us? Naruto inquired. Hold on a second, Kiba and Akamaru sniffed the air for about a minute. Okay here's what happened, the scent of two newcomers converged on the scent of Sasuke and four others. The two have stayed behind while Sasuke's group has moved on. It sounds like someone tried to intercept them but were defeated and left for dead, Shikamaru speculated. So, what does that mean for us? 
Naruto inquired. If we go to the location of the battle so we can gather some valuable information about the four who kidnapped Sasuke, but we can't just rush in because it could be a trap, so we'll go into full reconnaissance mode and take it slow. And while we're at it, Sasuke's capturers who have carried him beyond the borders of the land of fire and out of our hands, Neji reminded the others. We've come to a fork in the road, Shika, Naruto said. We continue our pursuit, but we must also be cautious. Those guys have already been in a battle, so they'll be on their guard. Unless they're complete idiots, they'll have to know there's going to be more ninja on their trail, Shikamaru said. That means they could have set up traps or ambushes ahead of us, Neji explained. Right, so from here on out, we must proceed with caution and keep all of your senses on high alert. If you notice anything out of the ordinary, sound the alarm. We need to find these guys before they find us. No problem, I've got some new jutsu I'm dying to try out on some poor saps. Smirked Naruto. Kiba frowned when he heard that, that Naruto, he's always getting stronger every time I see him, and just when I thought I was catching up with him, he keeps pulling ahead of me, then he suddenly picked up the scent of the enemies, the enemy's scent is here. All around us. Everyone stop. Shikamaru quickly called out, with the entire group landing on a tree branch at the same time, then he glanced up to catch sight of something, look up there, and the rest did as well, to find an explosive tag stuck to a tree trunk above them. An explosive tag, and I'm sure there are five more, they must be using a perimeter barrier, Neji explained. A perimeter barrier? Choji inquired. It's a type of ninjutsu trap that has a time delay after it has been breached long enough for the intruder to arrive at the center before automatically triggering itself, Naruto explained. Ah, now we have to waste time going around it, Kiba complained. We don't have much of a choice but to go through while keeping an eye out for more traps, Shikamaru said as he jumped from the tree to the ground. Let's go this way, he said. Naruto and the others trailed behind him, walking cautiously along the ground. They could see numerous tripwires along the way and avoided making any contact with them as they moved forward. Man, this place is crawling with booby traps, Kiba said. Yeah, but luckily they're easy to spot, because these guys are moving fast and getting sloppy, Shikamaru explained. Naruto avoided the tripwires as well, but something bothered him, Surely Orochimaru sent elites to capture Sasuke, and yet they're using this level of trappings? The blonde was carefully inspecting each tripwire as he passed through when he exclaimed, Hey guys, don't move. This caused the others to come to a halt. What is it, Naruto? Choji inquired. Naruto knelt on one knee as he examined the tripwire in front of him. Take a closer look at this, they gathered around him and examined the wire. There was another one, but it was thinner and almost impossible to see from a distance. How clever of them to create a trap within a trap, Neji said. So they made those tripwires visible to make us less aware in some ways before catching us off guard with hidden triggers, Shikamaru speculated. I'll scout ahead, by Akugan. Neji used his dojutsu to scan ahead of the team before declaring, I've found them. All right, time to bust some heads. Exclaimed Naruto. First we make a plan and get it right, then we can nail those bastards so I can go home and do less troublesome things, Shikamaru said, gathering them together and telling them of his plan as they listened intently. That's it. Kiba, the timing of those smoke bombs is absolutely crucial got it? The Inazuka nodded in agreement, so, split up and let's go. They set out with Naruto, Choji, and Kiba going one way and Shikamaru and Neji going the other, moving as quietly as they could through the bushes with Neji leading the way until they were several yards away from a small clearing where they saw their targets resting. Looks like we caught them napping, hum? Shikamaru observed something strange. Hold on, where's Sasuke? He's inside that coffin, Neji said, wielding his Byakugan. Do you think he's still alive? 
It's been sealed with a barrier jutsu that's difficult for me to see through. Considering they went through all that trouble to get him, I can't believe they'd be so eager to kill him so quickly, earning Orochimaru's wrath. Let's hope you're correct. The blue-haired sound nin stood up and threw a kanai in their direction, hitting a tree right behind them. They looked back and gasped in shock when they saw explosive tags attached to it and already triggered, forcing them to jump out of the bushes just as they detonated. The explosion's shockwave sent the duo skidding along the ground until they came to a halt, at which point they looked up to see the sound nin looking down at them. Well, I thought I was flushing out a snake from the bushes, but all I got were a couple of mice, Sakin sneered. Oh man, this has just turned into something extremely troublesome, Shikamaru thought. Shikamaru was thinking about the situation he and Neji were in when he noticed Jirobo preparing to attack, causing him to scramble to his feet and wave his hands placatingly. Whoa, hold up. We're here to negotiate, not fight. Why are we just talking about this like reasonable people? Shikamaru asked. Kitamaru smirked in response, then let's not forget about your friends, shall we? He jerked his other hands forward, and Naruto, Kiba, and Choji were yanked out of the bushes and into the clearing. Kiba, on the other hand, acted quickly and threw a smoke pellet onto the ground, causing a cloud of smoke to form between the two groups. Nice try, but it won't do you any good. My threads are so thin that you can barely see them but are very strong, so I still have your friends, Kitamaru smirked. The smokescreen began to clear, revealing Naruto and the others still bound by the aforementioned threads, much to the blonde's chagrin as he prepared to cut them loose with a wind-enhanced kanai. Shikamaru reflected on what Kitamaru had said and realized, so that double trap you had set up was actually a triple trap. I gotta say you must be the smartest one in the group. And now you're going to be the dead ones. Kitamaru approached but quickly found himself unable to move, much to his surprise, as did the others. Why can't I move? You aren't the only ones with a smart guy in a group, Kiba purposefully set up the smokescreen as a cover-up so that Shikamaru can snag you with his shadow possession jutsu. Naruto smirked, then took out a kanai and empowered it with wind chakra before cutting the threads of himself and the other two. I appreciate you making me look good in front of my squad, Shikamaru sneered at the group. But things changed when Sakin began to smile, making them wary. Very impressive, I would be even more impressive if I hadn't mastered that jutsu, he said. After hearing that, Naruto's hand slowly approached the Tsukiyotoshi strapped to his waist, but he was caught off guard when a volley of shuriken suddenly flew out of the bushes behind them and struck Shikamaru, causing him to lose focus and the jutsu to be disengaged. Jirobo grinned and made his move right away. Earth style. Earth dome prison. He slammed his palm against the ground, causing it to tremble as the earth suddenly rose around Naruto and the group, encasing them in an earthen dome with no way out. What is this? Neji asked, trying to make sense of the situation. Seems like some kind of barrier, and we're stuck in it, Shikamaru said, nursing his wounds and taking care to stop any bleeding. What do we do now? Kiba wondered. It's obvious that we need to get out of here, Naruto said. It appears to be nothing more than a dirt wall, Neji said of the dome. Even so, there has to be more to it than that, Shikamaru cautioned. HMPH, a wall is a wall, and there's no wall I can't punch a hole through, Kiba scoffed. I suppose so. Despite the risks, we definitely need to do something to get out of here. Kiba crouched with his claws bared before lunging at the wall, tunneling Fang. He spun quickly like a horizontal tornado as he slammed into the wall and burrowed his way through with dust and stones flying around. He soon came to a halt, revealing a medium-sized indent on the wall, and jumped back to the ground, surprised by what he and the others were seeing. The damn wall is repairing itself. Shikamaru exclaimed, surprised at what he was witnessing. 
so it's more than just a dirt wall, Byakugan. Neji activated his jutsu for a closer look and was surprised by what he saw. What is it, Neji? Naruto inquired. I just discovered that our chakra is being absorbed into the wall. This must be another aspect of the jutsu, says the narrator. Oh great, now we're in a really bad jam. We need to get out of here quickly before we lose all of our chakra, Kiba frowned. From what we know so far, this dome is absorbing our chakra to maintain its structure, which means that the guy who performed the jutsu must still be here to keep it active. Hum, I wonder if... Naruto turned to Neji, can you use your Byakugan to look outside the dome? I'll see what I can do, Byakugan. Neji activated his dojutsu once more and looked around before finally saying, I found him, he's right in front of us. Thanks, that's all I needed to know, Naruto replied, smirking. What's on your mind, Naruto? Choji inquired, puzzled. A way to get us out of here quickly, Naruto said as he approached the location where Jirobo was most likely to be found, then he reached into his ninja pouch and pulled out something that the others recognized. Is that Naruto? Shikamaru inquired. The sword of the Thunder God once belonged to the second Hokage? The very same one. I recovered it during one of my missions and Hokage Jiji allowed me to keep it, provided that I placed a seal on it that automatically summons itself back to the village if anyone tries it again, Naruto said, holding up the sword's hilt. How is it going to help us? Kiba inquired. Naruto simply smirked and closed his eyes in concentration as he channeled his chakra into the blade, then activated the weapon, which unleashed numerous streams of yellow electricity that arced throughout the entire dome. They heard a pained scream from outside, and seconds later the wall burst open to reveal Jirobo knocked back a few yards, his body twitching from the electricity. I see what you did there. You wanted to find him and then used the Raijin Blade to attack and break out of the Jutsu because lightning has an elemental advantage over Earth, Shikamaru said. That was totally awesome Naruto, thanks for getting us out of there, Choji expressed gratitude. Looks like he's on his own. The others must have gone ahead, Shikamaru observed. You're right, but they haven't gone too far yet, so we can still catch up, Neji said after a quick scan with his Byakugan. Then we'd better get moving and catch up with them. Ah. Do you really think I'd let any of you go anywhere? They turned to see Jirobo standing up and staring at them. I must admit that I'm impressed that a bunch of losers were able to escape my jutsu, he said. What did you say? Kiba was about to charge at the man when Naruto grabbed his hood and pulled him back. What's that for Naruto? Calm down, Kiba. Taking this guy head-on without a plan won't help us, Naruto frowned. Not to mention that he's baiting you to attack him, Shikamaru agreed. You're not as stupid as I thought, Jirobo slammed his palm on the ground, launching a shockwave in their direction, prompting Naruto and company to leap out of the way. He charged towards Naruto with a fist reared back and lashed out with a punch, but Jirobo was far from finished as he launched one punch after another with Naruto constantly tilting his upper body from side to side while backstepping until he saw an opportunity and swiftly took a step and performing a double palm thrust into Hirobo's stomach, sending him flying backwards from the strike, why you little brat. Hey, I'm the guy who helped screw up your boss twice. Do you really think you can beat me and my friends so easily? Then you must be the dumb one in the group, Naruto said quirking his brow. Naruto, listen, we're running out of time messing with this guy and need to catch up with the rest of his group before they cross the border, so we'll have to split up, Shikamaru said. Are you sure about this? I can tell these guys aren't joking, Naruto inquired. They felt the ground tremble and turned to see Jirobo holding a massive boulder over his head, proclaiming, Earth style, sphere of grains. Move. Shikamaru yelled as they jumped out of the way as Jirobo threw the boulder at them. They checked to see if the enemy was gone before feeling the ground shake again. Look out, here comes another one. 
A hand burst out from beneath the ground beneath Shikamaru's feet as he was grabbed by Jirobo and held upside down in front of the others. Shikamaru! Choji exclaimed, worried about his friend. So you're in charge of this ragtag team, huh? Said Jirobo, causing Naruto and Choji to grit their teeth in rage. So why don't I do you all a favor and get rid of him for you? He twirled Shikamaru and tossed him aside. Partial Expansion Jutsu Choji quickly bloated himself up, human boulder. And rolled to intercept Shikamaru before slamming into a tree trunk. Thank you, Choji. Shikamaru exclaimed gratefully. HMPH, and here I thought I was doing you all a favor, talk about ungrateful, Jirobo exclaimed. Naruto took a step forward cracking his knuckles, you really got some balls in between those legs to be talking trash about us, think it's time they got popped, he was about to attack when he heard Choji call out to him. Leave him to me, Naruto, this guy's mine. Choji exclaimed angrily. Naruto returned with a worried expression, but Choji. He's mine, Naruto sighed, seeing that his friend's mind was made up and unwilling to budge an inch, Choji reached into his pouch and pulled out a smaller brown pouch, holding it out to Shikamaru. Here's Shikamaru, take this bag of food pills. Shikamaru was initially perplexed until he realized what the Akamichi was planning. Choji, you're not going to. It's okay, I got my secret weapon, Choji said as he tossed it over. Yeah, but. Do you think I'm going to wait forever? Jirobo charged towards the group with every intention of harming them. Choji reached into his pouch again and took out a transparent plastic casing containing three pills colored red, yellow, and green, much to his surprise. First, the green spinach pill, Choji opened the case to pop the green pill into his mouth and ate it before standing at the ready. Jirobo prepared to smash through the boy and attack the others only to be stunned to his core when Choji stopped him dead in his tracks. What? How is this possible? Jirobo wondered. Whoa, he suddenly gained a lot of power. Could it be from those pills? Naruto wondered. Apparently so Naruto-sama, it must be a clan secret, Chinami speculated. Get going while I hold him off. Choji exhorted the others to leave. Shikamaru appeared conflicted about leaving his friend alone with the enemy. What have the five of us gotten ourselves into? If we lose Sasuke, we'll be exactly what this guy says we are. A stupid idiot of a leader and his band of rejects. Shikamaru remained silent for a moment before saying. You better catch up with us, Choji, you hear me? Don't die on us, man, I don't want to eat the barbecue without you, Naruto said with a forced grin. Yeah. So get out of here already. Choji confirmed. Alright, guys, let's move it. Shikamaru exclaimed before taking off, with the rest hesitantly following. Once I finish you off, kid, your friends will be next. Jirobo grumbled angrily. That's not going to be easy like you think. Choji began pushing against Jirobo to the point of him being pushed with his feet dragged along the ground until he managed to get a proper footing. What he wasn't expecting was Choji to grab hold of his rope belt and throw him along the ground slamming into a tree trunk, so far so good. Meanwhile, the rest of the retrieval team was making their way towards the other members of the Sound 4 and Sasuke, who was being held captive. Shikamaru passed the bag of food pills around for the others to consume in order to replenish the chakra they had lost when they were trapped by Jirobo. That's when Neji decided to ask Shikamaru a question. Those three food pills I saw Choji holding look like some last-minute trump card. Will they be enough to help him win? Neji wondered. Yeah, he did say he had a secret weapon on him, Kiba confirmed. Don't worry, Choji has a plan because he brought the Akamichi clan secret triple threat. Pills that grant a person explosive power, there are three of them. Green, yellow, and red, 
and the amount of energy that each pill contains is absolutely massive, Shikamaru explained to the team. But there's a cash, isn't there? Otherwise, you wouldn't have hesitated to abandon him, Naruto said. Yeah, the side effects can be very bothersome, which is why I'm hoping he wins before being forced to take the red pill. It's possible that the pills can be fatal if consumed in excess, Karama frowned. Then I hope he uses the ring before then, Naruto reasoned. Back at the fight, Choji was panting slightly when he felt a lot of pain in his stomach and realized it was a side effect of eating the pill, so he gritted his teeth to bear the pain. I never thought the first pill would hurt this much, I gotta finish this battle fast. Choji wrapped ropes of kanai around himself as Jirobo regained his feet, partial expansion jutsu. Then he bloated himself once more before withdrawing his arms, legs, and head within himself, spiky human boulder. He quickly rolled towards Jirobo who quickly jumped out of the way for the tree to be knocked down. He's upped his rotation and destructive power by using those stringed kanai-like spikes, Jirobo thought as he faced his opponent, he crouched low and slammed his palms on the ground, earth-style, tear a shield. A large slab of earth rose from the ground between him and Choji to serve as a barrier, he heard a slam on the other side and thought he was successfully stopped but then the wall crumbled Jirobo used all of his strength to stop Choji, but some of the kanai were able to stab him in several places. Did I get him? Choji wondered, his attacks having done enough damage to limit his opponent's mobility. Then he noticed something strange. As Jirobo glared back at him, he noticed some strange markings appear on his face and parts of his body. Don't think this is over, you little punk. Jirobo slammed a palm into Choji's stomach with such force that it sent him flying with a scream of pain as he was forcefully reverted back to his normal form and sent tumbling backwards to a stop. What was that, he suddenly became so strong. Choji wondered as he struggled to his feet. Hasn't anyone told you? In a team of five, there's always someone who's simply deadweight. The guy who's the butt of everyone's jokes and when thick comes to thin, he's the one to serve as cannon fodder. And guess what, that person is you. Jirobo sneered. Choji glared back, remembering how everyone looks down on him and criticizes him for everything, especially his weight. Jirobo charged in and launched a barrage of attacks, with the Akamichi defending as best he could, but his opponent's overwhelming strength and the side effects of the pill hampered his efforts and sent him tumbling back once more. Hey, a loser to the end. Sure, you had some backbone but it didn't last long, you're the eponymy of failure, but you can't be blamed, after all, you should blame your stupid leader for picking you, that blonde spiky brat would have made a better leader than him, Jirobo mockingly said. Hearing that only served to enrage Choji, so Shikamaru chose him to be part of the retrieval squad because he trusted him. Naruto didn't even try to be the leader because he, too, believes in Shikamaru, and both of them had entrusted him to hold this guy back while they continued on with the mission, hoping he'd catch up with them. They believe in me, and I can't let them down by losing to this guy. Choji thought as he stood up again and took out the plastic case to eat the yellow pill. Second is the yellow curry pill, his body surged with even more chakra than the green pill. Jirobo scoffed in response however, not a bad amount of chakra, but a far cry from even being called a snack. We'll see what we can do about that, Fatso. Choji smirked as he saw Hirobo's face twist in rage, feeling a sense of satisfaction. Do not address me as such. Jirobo charged at him, ready to attack arm. Partial expansion jutsu. Choji's right arm began enlarging to gargantuan size much to Hirobo's shock and was unprepared for the smack which sent him tumbling along the ground. Choji reverted his arm and now enlarged his leg in an attempt to stomp him deep into the ground but Jirobo was quick to roll out of the way. Choji charged in once more with an enlarged fist which Jirobo tried to catch but was being pushed back and breaking through several trees till he skidded to a stop. Shoulder charge, you little brat. 
Jirobo dashed at Choji with the intent of slamming into him with great force, but Choji reverted his arm and quickly enlarged his other hand to catch him with the impact forcing him as his feet dug trenches along the ground until he was able to come to a stop, and Choji lifted Jirobo into the air and slammed him into the ground, and now to finish this. Choji jumped onto a nearby tree branch, then into the air as high as he could, forming the hand sign, Super Expansion Jutsu. He grew his entire body to the size of a giant and descended with an obviously powerful body slam that landed with a loud boom. All of a sudden, Choji felt himself being lifted into the air, much to his surprise, and his dread was confirmed when he heard Hirobo's voice beneath him. I never thought I'd have to go into the second stage against a weakling like you, Jirobo exclaimed. Slamming Palm He lashed out with an attack that sent Choji flying high into the air and forcefully reverting him back to his normal size before crashing to the ground. Choji painfully sat up and was shocked to see Hirobo's newest appearance, his skin had changed color to brownish red with warts all around his face, shoulders, and forehead, his mohawk has grown into a long spiky mane that reaches his shoulders, and he gains yellow eye irises with dark eye sclerae. I'm afraid it's all over for you now. In my second state, I have ten times more power than ever before. Choji struggled to his feet but couldn't help but wince from the second pill's painful side effects. It really hurts, I never thought the pain would be this intense. Jirobo approached the Akamichi with a grin on his face, now it's time for me to teach you a final lesson, he reared a leg back and drove it into Choji's stomach, kicking him away a few feet away, weaklings are better off playing ninjas with their friends instead of taking on missions like these. Hum? Jirobo noticed something on the ground and picked it up, Choji looked over to see him holding a bag containing the last potato chip that he had taken from Naruto and Shikamaru this morning, well what do you know, you had a snack all this time and you weren't nice enough to share. Don't mind if I take the last potato chip, he said as he ate it greedily. Come to think of it, the second state consumes a lot of chakra, so I might as well take yours to replenish it. If he takes my chakra now, I might have to use the red pill, Choji struggled to his feet as Jirobo approached him slowly. But if I do, I'll die, there has to be another way, he noticed something glistening in the sunlight and looked down to see the ring on his finger. The ring that Naruto gave to me and the others, he said it would give me a powerful weapon when I called on it. I hope it will help me more than the last pill, Choji said as he held out the ring before him and called out, equip. The ring glowed brightly for a few moments before fading away to reveal Choji wearing what appear to be demonic red gauntlets resembling disproportionately swollen fists reaching up to the forearms while glowing with energy. Jirobo was taken aback at first, but quickly responded with a scoff, so what you're using a weapon won't change a thing. Now stop moving so that I can absorb your chakra. He charged towards Choji who assumed a boxer's stance while lightly bouncing on the tips of his toes, shatter palm. Choji weaved to the right before moving in for the counterattack. Brawler. Jirobo stumbled back in pain from the sudden increase and glared at his opponent, you little brat, crushing knee. He unleashed a three-hit punch combo, each strike leaving behind fiery trails and triggering small explosions. Choji's eyes narrowed in focus as he lashed out with an upward thrust of his knee. He quickly took a step back to avoid the incoming attack before zipping forward to land a powerful right hook to the face, triggering a stronger explosion that sent him flying. Jirobo skidded along the ground, glaring at his opponent with increasing frustration. The Konoha ninja was supposed to be laying on the ground before him, not fighting back. I refuse to lose here, Earth style. Earth Dome Prison. He slammed his palm against the ground, causing it to tremble as the jutsu was activated. Don't think I'll let you box me in like that again. Said Choji. He raised one of the gauntlets above his head, gathering energy within it, Eric's charge. Slam. He smashed the fist into the ground, triggering a stronger quake to cancel the jutsu and also causing Jirobo to lose his balance allowing him to rush up to the enemy and unleash another brawler combo, the last one charged to knock him back several feet. 
I've had enough of this, you little punk. I'm going to destroy you right now. An enraged Jirobo charged towards Choji, his fist reared to attack. Same here, Choji replied, charging back with a fist reared back as well, they collided in the middle and lashed out with their attacks. Boulder slam. Eric's charge. Magnificent swap. They collided fists the first time, triggering a shockwave upon the second, with a similar result, but it was the third attack that Choji dodged at the last moment to land a jab onto Hirobo's face, effectively breaking his nose and knocking him to the ground with his skull ringing like a bell. A lot of people tend to hold grudges for many things, such as eating their food without their permission. That first punch to the face was for eating the last of my favorite snack, Choji said angrily. The broken nose was for calling me names like Fatso and Loser, but you did something far worse than the last two that I'll never forgive you for. You insulted Shikamaru, my best friend who believed in me more than anyone else besides my father. One of the gauntlets began to gain energy by the second, how dare you? You had to insult Shikamaru after eating the last of my favorite food and calling me names. And for that, I'll obliterate you. I've got to get out of here, but my body won't move. Jirobo trembled at the sight of the blood-red aura surrounding the gauntlet, if that was to land a blow on him. Your punishment will be this last attack. Choji leapt into the air, fist raised to strike, and a large spectral version appeared next to it. Wait. No. Please do not. Hirobo's frantic cries went unheeded. ERYX STOMP CHARGE The sound ninja was reverted from his second state as he lay there unmoving with his chest visibly caved in from the impact, signaling his death. PANT, PANT PANT I DID IT I WON Choji smiled tiredly at the feeling of victory. I need to call the others, the ring responded to his thoughts and glowed slightly to contact the others. Is that you, Choji? Through the rings, Naruto inquired. Yeah, it's me, I beat him, he says. Next, Kiba's voice was heard saying, for real? That's awesome, Choji. Akamaru agreed with his partner and barked. Yeah man, I guess it's double for the barbecue for you, Naruto said. I'm glad to hear that, Choji. How are you? Shikamaru inquired. I'm damaged to a certain extent, and the side effects of eating the green and yellow pills haven't gone away, Choji said, hearing Shikamaru sigh with relief. I see, then you should stay behind and rest. Buddha. He speaks the truth, Shikamaru told us about the effects of the pills, Neji interjected. You are currently not in a position to assist us further. They're right, Choji. You've already played a significant role in this mission by eliminating one of the enemies, which increases our chances of success. This is something you should be proud of, Naruto said. Just hang tight until we get back, so you can tell us how you took that guy down. He was really getting on my nerves with his trash talking. Alright guys, I'll be waiting for you, Choji finally agreed. Don't worry. Choji, we'll be back soon, Shikamaru said before cutting off the transmission. Choji stumbled away from the newly created clearing and went to sit against one of the nearby trees, reminiscing on his past and how he used to be picked on before meeting Shikamaru and becoming best friends, recalling something his father once told him. Let me tell you something son, none of those boys have as kind a heart as you do and someday, you'll have a group of friends who see that quality inside you and respect you for it. You'll meet people who believe in you and entrust you with their lives. Treasure those people, Choji. You were right dad, I waited a long time but I was finally able to make some true friends, Choji sobbed. Everyone. Please return to me alive, okay? After leaving Choji behind to face Jirobo, the remaining members of the retrieval team were leaping through the trees as fast as they could to catch up to the sound ninjas and the captured Sasuke and were contacted of his success in defeating him but were in no condition to catch up and help them further. 
Akamaru suddenly sniffed something and barked at Kiba, who replied with a nod. Hey guys, we're almost there, Kiba warned the group. Neji activated his Byakugan and scouted for any anomalies. That's odd. It's still been a long time and we haven't encountered any traps. What are your thoughts on Shikamaru? They appear to have underestimated us, and they are rather arrogant. They believe we've all died and that the big guy is the only one chasing them, so they don't need to set a trap for their own man, Shikamaru stated. Those idiots, have they seriously forgotten that it was Konoha who drove back two villages during the Chunin exams and Orochimaru being all banged up as he is right now? Scoffed Naruto. I'll have to agree with you, Naruto. I find it rather insulting, but we exploit their arrogance, Neji said. You're right, which is why I devised a strategy, Shikamaru explained. We're all ears, Kiba said. The sound ninjas were making their way through the trees towards the border, wondering why one of them was taking so long to catch up with them. Isn't Jirobo running late? Sakin inquired. He was, but he just arrived, Kitamaru explained before looking back to see the person he was referring to finally appear and be right behind them. It's about time, what took you so long? Sakin inquired. Sorry, it took longer than I expected to eat those losers chakra, Jirobo explained. You'd better listen up fat ass, you're the one supposed to carry the coffin, so get on with it. Scowled to Yuya. Jirobo nodded quietly in agreement, okay. You seem awfully quiet today, Kitamaru said, breaking the silence. So, what's it to you? Jirobo inquired. Kitamaru landed on a tree branch and turned to face him, saying, it means I won't be handing over the coffin because you aren't the real Jirobo. Let me handle this one fellas, I'll catch up once I'm done here, he said as he tossed the coffin over to Tiyuya. Tiyuya and Sakan nodded in agreement before taking off again. Jirobo drew a kanai and charged in, but Kitamaru blocked the attack with one of his six arms. Jirobo puffed out smoke, revealing Shikamaru to be the impersonator. How did you know? Shikamaru inquired. The real Jirobo is constantly reprimanding Tiyuya for having a potty mouth. Well, you can't blame me for attempting. Shikamaru lashed out with a kick, which Kitamaru also blocked before going for a counter. Spiderweb Net Ninja Art Kitamaru's cheeks puffed up before spitting out a web that knocked Shikamaru back and struck him against a tree trunk. He was smirking when he felt something approaching from behind him and turned around to see Naruto lunging at him with a fist reared back, accompanied by some of his shadow clones. Don't be so arrogant, buddy. Kitamaru jumped off the tree branch, chasing Naruto as he spewed a large ball of spider silk into his hands and molded it. Ninja Art. Spiral Spiderweb. He exclaimed, spreading the ball of thread across a large area, entangling Naruto in his web. Kitamaru noticed something coming his way and turned around to see two mini tornadoes approaching from behind. Fang over Fang. Man Beast Ultimate Taijutsu. Kiba yelled as they approached their target, but Kitamaru suddenly flexed his six arms, swinging barely visible web threads and effectively evading the attack, allowing the duo to land on separate tree branches. Damn it, we're not going to let you get away. While hanging upside down from his threads, Kitamaru sneered at them. You took the words right out of my mouth. I recommend you check your position. Kiba looked down to see that his feet were webbed to a tree branch and held in place, as was the transformed Akamaru. You scumbag. Kitamaru looked at them with arrogance as Neji swooped in from behind to attack, but the sound nin sensed his approach and let go of his threads, dropping down to a branch below to dodge before quickly entangling in a web as well. Darn it, he managed to get us all even though we followed the plan, Shikamaru grumbled. Let's see how you like being inside an airtight cocoon, Kitamaru said before wrapping Neji in a webbed cocoon and turning to the others. I suggest you don't bother breaking free from the threads. They're so strong that even two elephants can't tear it apart, 
he smirked to Naruto. And now for some fun, he said, his cheeks bulging and chewing a few times before reaching into it with his arms and pulling out six thick strands of golden thread labeled, Ninja Art, Sticky Spider Thread. That's a different color than the others, what's he up to? Shikamaru wondered as he watched the spider-like ninja shape them into spiky boomerangs and noticed that they were hardening to a metallic form. And they're hardening. Now that I'm all set, Kitamaru said, I'm going to play a little game that involves figuring out which is the real one. He began throwing boomerangs at each, with the clones being forcefully dispelled and the others becoming more concerned as the numbers decreased until there was only one left. You appear to be a very lucky man. Too bad your luck has run out with this. He threw the last one at Naruto, causing it to stab him. Kitamaru barely had a nanosecond to react when something powerfully impacted his chin and launched him into the air, he painfully opened an eye to see Naruto in front of him with blue sparkles around him as the blonde ninja who delivered a barrage of rapid punches to the face then followed up with an elbow strike to the stomach before sending him flying to slam into a tree trunk with his kanai. Kitamaru rose to his feet and looked at Naruto, ignoring the pain, how in the world did he get out of my web? It ought to have been impossible. Naruto over here. Yelled a voice, and they turned to see Neji, Kiba, and Shikamaru all free from their webs before Naruto teleported over to them. You were also supposed to be trapped in the cocoon. Your webs have a chakra foundation, and chakra-based substances are no match for my gentle fist. I believe I'm the only one who can handle him. You can continue while I deal with him, Neji stated. Are you certain about this? This guy is undeniably stronger than the previous one, as Kiba pointed out. Akamaru had jumped into his jacket, shivering at the level of power emanating from the sound nin. Wasn't it Shikamaru who said we'd have to go one-on-one -on -one to complete this mission? Shikamaru frowned and replied. Yeah, we all agreed on that. Not to mention that if all of us stayed here, Sasuke would be taken away from us. We've come to save our fellow Leaf Shinobi, Sasuke, and we cannot let him fall into the hands of evil like Orochimaru because that is not our way. In addition, Neji turned to face Naruto, who returned his gaze before smiling slightly, Naruto, your eyes are sometimes better than mine. Now get started. Choji beat his guy, so I expect you to walk all over this one, Naruto said after a brief pause. Alright then. Let's get moving, Shikamaru said. You better beat this clown, Kiba said, and Akamaru agreed before they all resumed the chase, with Neji trailing behind. I'm not letting you get away. Kitamaru spat into his right hands as he formed another ball of thread. He flung three webs with sharp golden points at Naruto and the others, immobilizing Neji but the Hyuga released Chakra through his hands, shredding the webs to pieces and allowing them to continue on their way. If you want to go after them, you'll have to go through me, Neji said, his Byakugan activated. That's fine with me, and I can tell you're the strongest of the bunch, which means I get to have more fun. I'm eager to play with you, but I'll have to take it slowly or the game won't be as enjoyable. Neji took a silent stance and prepared himself. The game is for me to kill you in three minutes or less. Kitamaru molded another ball of spider silk into ninja art, spiral web bullet. In his mouth. Kitamaru spit out a spider web net at Neji, who dodged it and took cover behind a tree before repositioning himself on another branch. He used the gentle fist to shred through the incoming web projectiles, which seemed to work well at first but the rate of fire caught him off guard and pinned him to a tree trunk with additional webs restraining his hands. Lord Orochimaru had told me about you and your clan, so taking care of those bothersome hands of yours would keep you from cutting through my silk. It's only been a minute, but I'm already sick of playing with you now that I've figured you all out, Kitamaru planned another attack while Neji remained silent. Now, sticky spider thread, die. When the web holding Neji suddenly shredded in pieces around his body without the use of his hands, he moved out of the way for the spike to hit the tree and ran along it, landing right in front of the stunned sound nin. 
I guess your master forgot to mention that the hands are not the only place to release chakra for the gentle fist. I can do so from chakra points all over my body. And now, as they say, gentle fist art. 8 trigrams 64 palms, it's game over. Kitamaru bit the thread and attempted to retreat, but Neji refuted the attempt by dash forward and striking, two palms. Before continuing with the assault. Four palms. Eight palms. Sixteen palms. Sixty-four palms. Says one. The force of the strikes was such that it sent Kitamaru smashing through a tree trunk and plummeting to the ground below, with Neji following close behind. He thought the attack was over when he saw his opponent rise to his feet, the dust cloud clearing to reveal a layer of golden metal on Kitamaru's body before breaking into pieces. That was a close call. One hit from you would have frenzied my chakra network. You certainly keep me guessing, with a smirk, Kitamaru said. Where did that material come from? Neji inquired sternly. Aren't you curious? My sticky spider thread is actually a type of metal that hardens as soon as it leaves my body and is extremely resistant to chakra. I can secrete not only through my mouth, as you saw, but also through sweat glands on my skin. Then it's no surprise that my attacks didn't truly connect. I'll have to find a way around it, Neji thought as he noticed Kitamaru had vanished without a sound. Where has he gone now? The spider net won't work against him, and engaging in close combat is practically walking to my death, Kitamaru had hidden himself in the foliage away from his target. When Neji detected movement from above, he dashed to the side in time to avoid a kanai with an explosive tag attached. He prepared to flee but noticed that the tag didn't ignite immediately before reaching a disturbing conclusion. It's a ploy. He exclaimed as he was suddenly bombarded with kanai from all directions and quickly launched into a defense, 8 trigrams palm rotation. Neji began spinning on his axis while releasing chakra from his body, forming a spinning dome that deflected all kanai. How the hell did he know? Is it possible that he has eyes in the back of his head? Kitamaru ducked his head in surprise when Neji threw a kanai in his direction without looking before turning in his direction. I know you're over there, come on out. Neji exclaimed. It has to be his eyes. They have to do more than just see chakra points. Neji paused, thinking. Long distance combat is not my specialty. I need to get close to him and end this, he noticed Kitamaru hanging upside down above but noticed that a majority of his body was covered in black markings, as well as a sharp increase in the amount of overall chakra. It's as if he's transformed into a completely different person. I have to give credit where credit is due because the game has become more interesting, which means I can play a lot harder. Kitamaru bit his thumb and performed a series of hand signs before slamming his palm on a web formed by his hands and exclaiming, summoning Jutsu. A large puff of smoke dissipated, revealing him to be standing on the Kyodaigumo, a giant spider. I'll warn you once, I'll find a way around this strong defense of yours, the spider said as Kitamaru formed a kanai and cut an opening for numerous baby spiders to fall towards Neji below while creating spider silk threads. Rotation. Neji spun again to defend, but he soon realized that the web strands were reducing the speed of his jutsu to the point where the dome of chakra dissipated, and he quickly detected a kanai heading for him when he was at his most vulnerable. You are now dead. As the kanai approached its target, Kitamaru sneered. Neji concentrated hard and released a burst of chakra at the last second of his spin to deflect the kanai before being completely restrained by the webs. His webs cancelled my rotation. I need to be more careful than before, he shredded the webs holding him down, leapt into the air to evade a barrage of kanai, and dodged a second barrage in midair before landing on the ground. However, another shower of spiders descended from the Kyodaigumo. 8 trigrams, 64 palms. He exclaimed, destroying every spider in his path as they fell, but the problem was that the numbers were too large for him to handle at the rate he was going. 
There's no end to them, so I'm forced to use that technique. He retook the stance, but this time rotated his upper body to a 90 degree angle. 8 trigrams 128 palms. He was now striking the spiders at dizzying speeds, his perspective being that everything around him had slowed down. I'm done if he manages to land any of those strikes on me, even with the sticky spider thread armor. But let's see who comes out on top in a game of attrition, Kitamaru commanded more spiders and Kanai to descend. There are still too many of them and not enough time, my rotation won't work in this, Neji shredded the web, only to have a Kanai knife slice his right shoulder, darn it. What happened just now? How did one of them get through in less? He has a blind spot in his ostensibly 360 degree vision. Let's put that to the test, shall we? Kitamaru made spiders fall from the sky, and Neji was about to use his 8 trigrams when he was struck in the back by a kanai. That's it, he said, launching a barrage of kanai from all directions. Neji dodged them, but two more struck him in the back. Damn, how is he able to strike me? Moaned Neji. I figured it out. All your fancy moves are designed to hide the fact that you can't see everything around you. It's been entertaining, but it's game over for you. Kitamaru commanded the Kyodaigumo to fall on Neji with the Hayuga using his gentle fist on it only to make it burst into web silk which held him down for three more kanai to hit him till he collapsed to the ground, that was fun for some time but now to go after the rest of those brats, he turned to leave but then noticed that Neji was getting back to his feet and taking off the kanai from his back in spite of the pain. Kitamaru smirked as his markings glowed ominously and spread even further all over his body, despite the blows, he could still stand. I guess I'll have to practice my aim. He underwent a transformation in which his skin turned dark red, his eyes gained yellow irises with dark black sclerae, elongated teeth and fingernails, and his hair grew longer and gray. Kitamaru sprouts horns on his brow, shoulders, and elbows before removing his headband to reveal a third eye. He's turning out to be more fun than I thought possible. I might as well show my appreciation by playing far more intensely than before, he said, tying a long bow with his sticky spider thread. Neji was struggling to keep fighting despite the damage, and he credits his ability to do so to his insane training with Might Guy. All of his moves were to study my techniques and abilities, which is how he discovered my blind spot. I can't get close enough because he won't let me, and the lack of long-range attacks is really hurting me. He's a lot stronger than I am. Something caught Neji's eye in the sunlight, and he looked down to see the ring on his finger, and Naruto's voice echoed in his mind. Choji beat his guy, so I'm expecting you to walk all over this one, Naruto said. Neji laughed, he's tougher than I expected, Naruto, but I'm confident I can defeat him with your assistance. Equip. For a few moments, the ring glowed brightly before fading away to reveal him holding a sheathed cobalt blue rapier. Is that a sword? Is he desperate enough to open the most useless weapon in this situation? It's time to call it quits, Kitamaru fashioned an arrow and affixed it to the bow. Neji gripped the sword's handle and began to chant, A.A. Reincarnate. The great dragon of calamity has been captured by riches. Fafner, become the worldwide compensation for desire. Kitamaru fired the arrow, which raced towards Neji as he unsheathed the sword in a flash of blue light, which faded to reveal him wearing a black and white mechanical suit of armor with various areas that glow with pale blue light. Its right arm is armed with a sniper rifle, and seven octagonal shields of bluish-white light hover behind him, one of which has blocked the arrow. So that sword actually gave him armor as well as some kind of protective shielding, but the spacing between them appears to be more than enough for an arrow to go through while I use a chakra thread to guide it all the way without defects, Kitamaru formed another arrow with a chakra thread attached before taking aim and firing the arrow at high speed, guiding it to go around the barriers and aim for the blind spot but he didn't expect to see one of the barriers actually move to intercept and deflect the arrow. How is this even possible? My arrow was too fast, and he was too injured to even dodge it, let alone sense it through his third eye, he noticed something else. 
He's not even using that eye of his. I'll need to put some distance between us as that weapon in his hand is making me uncomfortable, Neji says. Kitamaru jumped further away and continued to observe his opponent's new changes, so he's now wearing armor and energy shields that automatically defend him, but he doesn't appear to be very agile because he didn't even try to dodge the arrow and instead relied on the shields to protect him. I just need to keep the shields busy so I can land the hit, he made several arrows, one of which had a drill-like tip. Kitamaru knocked several normal arrows to the bow before firing them all at once, and the energy shields were quick to defend. Now's my chance. Kitamaru exclaimed. This is my win. He exclaimed as the drill-tipped arrow flew past the preoccupied shields and into Neji's blind spot. Neji then muttered. Wise blood. Before rotating in a 180 degree spin to completely evade the arrow and taking aim before firing a thin blue beam of energy that flew at high speed and struck a stunned Kitamaru, encasing his body in ice as he toppled over to crash to the ground. How could this be? There was no way he could have seen the attack and dodged in time to even counter, he heard a low hum and turned to see Neji flying towards him. How? This armor is known as a drag ride, and it provides the wearer with the war potential of a thousand soldiers. This is a special drag ride called Fafnir, and it has a special ability called Wise Blood, which allows me to see a few seconds into the future with a radius of a few dozen meters, which I use to dodge your attacks even from a blind spot before using the freeze cannon to take you down. So you were enticing me in at this time. In fact, you were gathering information about me with each attack, so I purposefully gave you false information to open a window of opportunity for me to strike," Neji said as he took aim with the rifle. Kitamaru chuckled weakly, his entire body becoming completely numb. Hey. Guess I'm the loser in this game, he says. True, but I must thank you nonetheless. This fight taught me that if people like you exist, I must become even stronger. Farewell. He drew the trigger, killing Kitamaru with a headshot before the drag ride reverted to its sword form. I need to contact the others, Neji said, and the ring immediately connected with them. That you, Neji? Shikamaru inquired. Yes, I was able to defeat my opponent, but I was injured. It will take some time to heal my wounds before I can catch up with you all, Neji said this while wincing from the aforementioned wounds. So the guy's as strong as we thought, guess we should keep our guard up with the rest of those bastards, Kiba said. Focus on healing yourself, Neji, and then catch up when you can, Naruto advised. Understood, Neji said as he reached into his pouch for the medkit to start patching himself up. I promise to catch up to you. Just give me a little more time. We're getting close, Kiba said. Jeez. Things are really starting to pick up, don't you think? Said Naruto, who was leaping through the treetops with Shikamaru, Kiba, and Akamaru during their pursuit of the sound ninjas as the sun set. Perhaps, but right now it's the three of us versus the two of them, and I kinda like those odds, Shikamaru said. Hey, what do you think of three of us? Kiba inquired. Arf arf exclaimed Akamaru, irritated at being left out. Shikamaru responded with a smirk, Oh sorry about, I meant four of us. Hey, I can't wait to blow them all away with the new jutsu Akamaru and I have been working on. Exclaimed Kiba. So, what's the game plan for this one Shika? Naruto inquired, ready to weigh in. We're still working on it, but the important thing is that we have to catch up with them before the sun completely sets. Then let's hurry up and get this party started. The group accelerated in an attempt to catch up to the remaining two sound ninjas and rescue Sasuke from them. Tuyuya and Saken were ahead of them, trying to stay ahead of their pursuers until they reached the border. The sun is setting, and Jirobo and Kitamaru have yet to catch up with us, Saken said. Forget about those jerks. I'm more concerned about what Orochimaru will do to us if we don't get this guy to him on time, Tuyuya said nervously. 
Displeasing Orochimaru frequently has disastrous consequences. Soon after, the sun had completely set, and night had descended on the land. Naruto and company were still on the hunt for their prey. Hurry, I can smell them just ahead of us. Kiba exclaimed. No, we're close enough as it is, and it's best if we keep this distance until sunrise, Shikamaru said. Why, we could even use the darkness to launch a surprise attack on them, capture Sasuke, and then flee back to the village. Sounds plausible, and I would have agreed with you, but the main issue is that for the plan to work, we need stable visibility. We can't risk going in blind, wandering through the darkness. The moment they figure out what we're up to, they'll simply solidify their defense around the coffin and hold out until we tire ourselves out. Surely you're not forgetting about our sense of smell, are you? Kiba asked, and Akamaru agreed. I haven't forgotten about it, but keep in mind that they've also memorized the geography thanks to Orochimaru, plus. Shikamaru looked up to peer through the trees and see the dimly lit moon and cloudy skies. My jutsu won't be much help at this time with the moon being so dim and the clouds moving around overhead. We should wait until daylight. I'm not sure about that idea. Kiba said hesitantly. I concur with Shikamaru, Naruto said. I assumed you'd prefer to attack them now rather than later. Even though we share the same rank, I would go to Shikamaru for strategies. Just trust him, he hasn't led us astray, Naruto insisted. Fine. Then what are your plans once the sun comes up? I'm already working on it, Shikamaru said thoughtfully. Meanwhile, in the land of rice paddies, in a hideout. Screams of pain could be heard echoing down the dark corridors. Kabuto hurried into a room where the source of the agonizing screams was hidden behind a shower curtain. Lord Orochimaru. Muttered Kabuto. As the snake Sanin endured the endless pain inflicted on him by his failed assault on the hidden leaf village, he was in the shower, blood seeping from his rotted arms and flowing into the drain. Is Sasuke still not here? Orochimaru demanded. Time is running out for him. He won't last at this rate, Kabuto reasoned. You have many other bodies at your disposal. You can even use mine if you want. No, it has to be Sasuke. But you're out of time, the sword Uzumaki used on you was stronger than we thought. We had no idea he had such a weapon. Orochimaru's eyes widened as he remembered that damn memory. He almost succeeded in killing the third Hokage with the forbidden reanimation jutsu if it hadn't been for that blonde Jinchuriki appearing out of nowhere and using that strange sword that not only freed the past Hokages he had been controlling but also directly damaged his soul and rendered his arms unusable. You will lose everything if you don't take another body right now. Kabuto insisted. Everything. Orochimaru screamed in agony as more blood poured out of his arms. I'll go get them ready for you, then I'll make sure Sasuke is retrieved, Kabuto started leaving the room. I'll have to use Kimimaro for this. Curse you, Uzumaki. Curse you. Raged Orochimaru at the source of all his problems. The sun was high in the sky as Sakin and Tuyuya leapt through the trees before pausing for a brief moment of rest. Are we almost there yet? Sakin inquired. No, and we still have a long way to go, Tuyuya said, looking behind her, Sakin following suit, to see Naruto and company right behind them. And there's still no sign of Jirobo or Kitamaru. Newsflash. Those two are dead, couldn't you see that? Sneered Naruto. Who needs those two when I can handle those guys myself? Sakin yelled as he lunged at the group, forming a hand sign in midair. Let's intercept him, Kiba! exclaimed Shikamaru as he leapt towards the enemy, Kiba right beside him, while Naruto remained behind to form a Rasengan. Fist Barrage Sakin began throwing punches at breakneck speed, 
repeatedly striking Shikamaru and Kiba before sending them flying, only to see them vanish into puffs of smoke. Those were shadow clones in disguise? Naruto lunged with his jutsu at Saken to attack Rasengan. But Saken intercepted by grabbing his wrist, causing the jutsu to be disrupted. How are you supposed to hit me when you can't even throw it? Smirked Saken, noticing Naruto's smug smile. Because I was baiting you to come after me, he explained, and something zipped past them, revealing Kiba using the tunneling fang jutsu and heading straight for Tiyuya in the coffin. They lured Saken away so they could target me next, Tiyuya reasoned as she prepared to move when something immobilized her from head to toe as Kiba quickly grabbed the coffin. What the? Shadow paralysis jutsu, successful, Shikamaru declared confidently. Damn it. Saken tried to flee, but Naruto grabbed his wrists and held him in place. No need to rush, let me help you with that. Naruto reared his head back and slammed it into Saken's, dazing him before hopping back and lunging at him, bicycle kicks. He rapidly pummeled Saken's face and chest while pedaling his feet in midair, flying kick. He then attacked with a powerful kick, sending Saken flying towards Tiyuya. Kiba jumped out of the way with the coffin, while Shikamaru moved Tiyuya into range before releasing the jutsu, allowing them to collide as they fled. Come on, Shikamaru. It's time to pull out. Kiba exclaimed, handing Naruto the coffin as they walked away. Don't worry, I'm right behind you. Shikamaru said as he followed them. Just like I suspected, they left themselves wide open, he added. Those punks think they can get away so easily? Saken rose to his feet as the cursed mark spread across his face and body. Well, think again. He went after them with great speed, unlike before, with Tiyuya trailing behind him. Naruto and the others were moving as quickly as they could when Kiba sniffed the air and looked behind him, saying, Guys, we've got incoming, and it's coming in fast. What a drag, keep going. We're almost there. Shikamaru exclaimed urgently. When they heard barking and looked down, they saw Akamaru on a tree branch with his paws on an explosive tag, with several more stuck to other trees behind the puppy. Alright, Akamaru, get moving once you set the tags. Exclaimed Kiba as he walked past the puppy. Saken landed on a tree branch and turned to see an explosive tag burning up and about to detonate, much to his horror. What? Boom. The tag exploded as the tree fell to the ground in flames, followed by several others. Perfect, he fell right into our trap. Naruto exclaimed, smiling. Kiba nodded, nicely done, Akamaru. The puppy barked happily and dashed over to his partner. Suddenly, something leapt out of the smoke, revealing Saken, who had escaped the explosion that had surprised Naruto and the others. Don't think you can mess with me. He said as he launched ninja wire at Akamaru, tying him to a branch with an explosive tag attached to it. I'm going to kill that mutt. Get away from Akamaru. Kiba rushed to Akamaru's aid as the tag began to detonate. Kiba, wait. Shikamaru exclaimed. Boom. But the tag detonated sending an explosive shockwave down into the valley below. Kiba. Akamaru. Naruto called out in concern, about to follow them when Kurama interrupted. There's still one more enemy approaching you, Naruto-kun. Exclaimed the nine-tailed vixen urgently. When Naruto saw Tuyuya approaching him and Shikamaru to attack them, he yelled angrily, Damn it, we don't have time for this. Man, what a drag, Shikamaru agreed. Kiba got back to his feet at the bottom of the valley, feeling bruised in certain parts of his body but otherwise fine, and went to check on his canine partner. Akamaru, are you alright? The puppy asked, much to his relief. That's great to hear, I was really worried about you. You won't have to worry about anything anymore once I send you to the afterlife, a voice said, 
causing them to turn and see Sakan not far away. Kiba glared at him, like that's going to happen, you're going down here and now. I'd like to see you give it a shot. Kiba reached into his ninja pouch and pulled out two soldier pills, one of which he ate and tossed to Akamaru, causing the puppy's fur to turn red. Alright, ninja art of beast mimicry, all fours jutsu. Kiba stood on his hands and feet before sprinting forward, kicking off the rocks in a pinball fashion until he was Sakin's blind spot and attacked from behind, landing a hit, got him. Sakin, on the other hand, smiled smugly over his shoulder as something unexpectedly hit Kiba, sending him tumbling away and splashing into the nearby river. Akamaru dashed over to check on him. What just happened? I know my attack connected but it didn't seem to damage him, then there was that attack, I didn't see it coming either, muttered Kiba as he rose to his feet. In that case, Akamaru, we'll go with a pincer attack this time. Arf. Akamaru barked in agreement and stood ready. Man Beast Ultimate Taijutsu, Fang over Fang. They dashed forward while running on all fours and sharply darting left and right to throw their opponent off as they drew close, Beast Mimicry, Man Beast Clones. There was a puff of smoke and it faded to reveal a doppelganger in Akamaru, alright, let's go. They dashed forward while running on all fours and sharply darting left and right. However, when the dust settled, the results were far from what Inazuka and his canine companion had hoped for. Sakin was restrained by both of them, and another was protruding from his back for some strange reason. What's up with this guy? Kiba was taken aback when he saw this and lashed out with a kick, only for a foot to emerge from Sakin's stomach and block it. What the? This is quite perfect, Sakin. There's one for each of us, the other body said before punching Kiba, who then puffed into smoke, revealing a hurt Akamaru on the ground. Akamaru! Kiba exclaimed, concerned. Oh, so you're the real deal. Multiple fists barrage. Sakin punched Kiba, sending him crashing into a boulder. Kiba looked up to see Sakin in front of him with a punch midway, which he leaned out of the way to barely dodge, but an arm emerged from the elbow to grab him by the neck. Damn it. Kiba tried unsuccessfully to break free from the chokehold. My brother and I get along really well. Yukon usually sleeps within me while I'm active, but he'll come out to play when the occasion demands it, Sakin explained. Now that I think about it, this must be his ability. This must have helped them escape when Shikamaru had captured them during our first encounter, Kiba reasoned. He can focus his arms and legs out of any part of my body for offense or defense, like that. Yukon protruded his head next to Sakin's and a fist emerged from his brow to hit Kiba in the face. Arf, arf. Akamaru charged in to assist Kiba, but Sakin saw him coming and smirked deviously. Multiple leg barrage. Sakin split his legs into three and launched Kiba into Akamaru's direction, both collapsing into another rock and appearing seriously injured. How does it feel to be kicked by three legs at once? Why I can even. That's enough, Sakin. We don't have any time to play around. He activated his curse seal fully to transform into a red-skinned oni with a long horn protruding from his forehead. We're going into phase two and wrapping this up, he grumbled while looking at his brother in annoyance. Oh well, you're always so impatient, Sakin said as he transformed. I gotcha, those horns aren't just for show. I can sense that their power has greatly increased with that transformation of theirs. Makes me suspect that Neji and Choji went through the same thing with their opponents, Akamaru whined. What are you in the mood for, brother? Sakin inquired. Rip them apart, Yukon said flatly. Damn it, I think we're done here, Kiba grumbled. Arf! exclaimed Akamaru, who appeared to have surprised Kiba. What are you saying, Akamaru, you want us to try that jutsu without anyone around to back us up? Kiba exclaimed, with the puppy nodding in agreement. 
It's too risky to use it without anyone around to back us up. The moment we use it, all that remains of our chakra will be used up and we won't be able to move afterwards. It'll be all over for us the moment we miss, we'll have died for nothing. The next thing Kiba knew, Akamaru was pouncing at him and biting his hand, much to his surprise. Akamaru. After a long wait, Sakan and Yukon charged towards the duo, intent on killing them once and for all. Akamaru moved quickly to protect Kiba, who was looking down in thought. I must be a bad master if you bite me like that, all right then Akamaru. Kiba rose to his feet and prepared to use the jutsu. Akamaru lunged forward and moved past them, who simply ignored the pup, and went straight for Kiba, punching him in the torso with enough force to make him spit blood. Kiba, on the other hand, had braced himself and grabbed Sakan's arms to keep him in place. Dynamic marking, Akamaru. Sakan and Yukon looked up to see Akamaru spinning in midair above them before realizing what it was. Dog pee? What kind of trick is that? Now's my chance. Kiba backed up and kicked off a rock, somersaulting into the air, Akamaru landing on his head as he made the hand sign, Inazuka style, man-beast transformation combo. Two-headed wolf. There was a large amount of smoke before a loud thump revealed a giant feral version of Akamaru, albeit with two heads that were drooling large amounts of saliva onto the ground. All that flare and you're nothing but a slobbering dog, Sakan snorted at the sight of the transformation. What can that mutt possibly do? Sneered Yukon. They leapt into the air and spun at high speeds, resembling a massive tornado, much larger than when Kiba and Akamaru used the fang over fang jutsu. Sakan barely avoided the incoming attack, receiving a cut on one of his legs, but he slipped the moment he landed and discovered the cause. The drool. Sakan exclaimed in realization. You idiot, Sakan. On your right. Yelled Yukon angrily. The warning came too late, as they were hit dead on by the attack, wolf fang over fang. The combination attack continued to shred at the enemy's body until it was literally torn in half, with both halves falling away from each other and the duo landing afterwards. How do you like that? Wolf Fang over Fang's revolution speed is so intense that we can't see anything while attacking, but it will cut you even without direct contact and will rip you to shreds if it does, Kiba said smugly. But then he saw the two halves of the body squirm and regenerate the missing halves with gray scaly replacements before rising to their feet and facing them as if nothing had happened. Don't get too far ahead of yourself, brat, Yukon cautioned. To be honest, we were planning to split up, Sakan admitted. They actually split into two? Kiba exclaimed, stunned. Things would have been bad had we taken the full brunt of that attack, now's the time to get serious, Yukon continued. Kiba noticed his legs shaking and realized what was going on. Even Akamaru was complaining about their current situation. I know, boy, we only have enough in the tank to use Wolf Fang over Fang one more time, so we need to make this last shot count, Kiba reasoned. This time, we're taking them down, Wolf Fang over Fang. The duo charged again, Sakan and Yukon darting out of the way and hiding behind some of the large rocks scattered around, but they were unfazed. There's no point in hiding, we're not relying on our eyes right now, but rather tracking you by the scent which Akamaru had placed on you earlier. They quickly located the sound ninjas and continued their attack. However, Sakan and Yukon bit their thumbs hard enough to draw blood, then sped through a series of hand signs before slamming their palms to the ground, revealing a giant gate resembling that of a roaring demon. Kiba and Akamaru collided with the gate, which was dented, but it stopped them completely and caused them to fall to the ground. Impressive. Rashomon is Lord Orochimaru's greatest defense, but for him to dent it like that. Yukon said. However, it doesn't matter. Because this is the end. Snorted Sakan. 
The twins jumped into the air with their fists reared back to finish off the duo when one of the heads awoke and splashed something into Sakan, causing him to cry out in pain while undoing the transformation, revealing Akamaru, who purposefully took the hit from Yukon and crashed to the ground. Akamaru! Kiba exclaimed in horror, refusing to believe that the puppy had acted as a shield to protect him as he fell. Damn it, he did it again. But this one feels like it's trying to burn out my eyes. Sakin exclaimed angrily. Go wash your eyes out by the river while I deal with this one by myself, Yukon grumbled as he turned to face Kiba. Darn it, I can't move. This can't be the end for us, can it? Kiba tried to move to check on Akamaru but realized his body was severely weakened from both the transformation and the recent damage from colliding with the Rashomon Gate. Like I said before, I'm going to rip you apart, Yukon said as he approached. TCH, looks like I'm out of tricks, Kiba said as he noticed a glint and looked down to see the ring on his finger before recalling something. These rings are linked to the bracelet and have the ability to summon a weapon to the wearer without requiring me to be nearby to use tag mode, Naruto said in his mind. I have no other options, please give me something to turn this around so I can save Akamaru. The ring glowed brightly for a few moments before fading away to reveal Kiba wearing a device modeled after a wolf's head on his left wrist. It's purple with a gold bell and hammer on top. As he stood, Kiba felt information about this device flow into his mind. What is that thing supposed to do besides try to make you look pretty? Yukon questioned. Let me show you. Kiba then took a stance after opening up the wolf's head of the gong changer, Echo. Howl of the beasts. Beast on. He flicked the hammer to make it hit the bell, the device released violet energy which engulfed Kiba's body before dissipating to revealing him donning a violet and black helmet and bodysuit with a wolf's motif, the suit is adorned with metallic armor at the arms, feet, elbows and knees. What the hell just happened? Demanded Yukon. Excitement, my style, to the limit of my will. Iron Wool, Geki Violet. Kiba struck a pose as an explosion of purple smoke erupted behind him. This isn't going to change anything. Yukon charged at him. Geki Vaza Wolf Ken. Kiba accelerated forward and landed a powerful knee kick into Yukon's torso, causing him to stumble backwards in pain before retaliating with punches and kicks. Kiba counterattacked with elbow and knee strikes while blocking and parrying. He grabbed an outstretched punch by the wrist and moved in to attack, savage savage elbow. He raised an arm into the arm and brought an elbow down hard on Yukon's forehead, which actually broke off the forehead, causing him to stumble back but Kiba wasn't done, Gekivaza wolf wolf kick. He performed a spinning jump into the air and landed an axe kick upside the head yet again. Yukon collapsed to the ground before rising to his feet, blood dripping down his face in disbelief at what was happening. Where the hell did he get this power? He exclaimed. Brother. He exclaimed, turning to see Sakin running towards him to assist. Come over here and assist me in dealing with this jerk. He's become far too annoying now. Kiba snorted behind his helmet, you haven't seen anything yet. Gekivaza Wolf Ken. Hard Hard Attack. He tapped the gung changer, releasing a bright flash of violet light that faded to reveal him and the sound ninjas within the fighting arena, much to the surprise of the latter two. What the hell, is this some kind of genjutsu? Sakin exclaimed, stunned. Here I come. Kiba lunged at them, striking Sakin and snapping back into focus and attacking. He quickly switched between the two targets while engaging them in close combat. He was fighting Yukon when Sakin charged in, grabbed Kiba by the shoulder, and tried to do something before being knocked back by a burst of violet energy. I couldn't merge my body with him. That strange energy is preventing me from doing so. Sakin exclaimed, his moment of distraction costing him as Kiba went after him after knocking Yukon away. Gekivaza Wolf Wolf Bullet 
Kiba took a stance as his body radiated violet energy and gathered above him to create a violet lupine wolf with a bladed tail, he thrust a fist forward to launch the wolf which jumped at the enemy in a spinning attack, slashing with its bladed tail before the arena disappeared as Sakan fell to the ground with his body cut up and forcefully reverted from the cursed form. As Sakan spoke weakly, Yukon rushed over to him and absorbed him into his body. That really hurt, you take over while I rest inside the body, Sakan said. You're so pathetic, Sakan, Yukon retorted bluntly. As for you, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to kill you. Sorry pal, but that's not going to happen. Gekivaza Wolf Kenna, Kiba tapped the gong changer to make it start flashing as violet energy enshrouded his left fist then he suddenly appeared in front of Yukon in a burst of speed before he could react, a rise rise fist. He attacked with a powerful uppercut to launch Yukon into the air and crashing to the ground behind him. Kiba began walking away from Akamaru as Yukon struggled to his feet, stopping and holding out the gong changer. Knockout, he said as he closed the gong changer. Violet electricity surged through Yukon's body as he screamed in agony before collapsing while engulfed in an explosion, leaving behind an immobile charred body. Kiba undid the transformation as he went to carry Akamaru in his arm. I can't believe you went and took that hit to protect me. I really am a lousy master, he said to the puppy, his feelings of self-loathing growing as he looked at the puppy. Well, you look like you've been through a lot but come out on top. I think I should reconsider my opinion of you leaf ninjas. Kiba turned around, about to use the gong changer to transform again, when he heard who spoke and relaxed a little before responding, what do you know? Looks like we're allies again. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.